Well, thanks, Greg, and hello, everybody, and thanks for your interest in the, in the audience for my talk about new apple cultivars in organic food production in northern Germany. First, I'd like to say something to the Esterburg. Esterburg is a center for research, extension, and training in food production. I'm presenting this on behalf of my, wait a minute, move this, or my colleague Rolf Steyr, who is a variety testing, in the variety testing department, uh, our variety tester. Okay. This shows you where we are located. This is right across the Atlantic, and it's uh, in the city of Hamburg and the River Elbe. And this is the right north of Germany, and this is the largest combined area of apple production in northern, northern Europe. We call it Old Land, in German, Altes Land, and that's the region I'm, um, I'm working. And our Fruit Research Institute is located in the middle of this region of 10,000 hectares, which makes uh, 25,000 acres of fruit production with 90% apples. A key provision in a lot of fruit producing schemes in the EU and Germany uh, is to choose plant cultivars which are resistant to diseases and adapted to lo local conditions like soil and climate. The, the farmers' organizations for organic fruit growing in Germany, called FOCO, decided at their annual meeting last year to publish a recommendation for their members to use 20 to 30 percent resistant apple cultivars in their individual farm replanting programs. And now I show you, after one minute introduction, nine new cultivars, nine slides, and I hope you manage the time, Greg. Um, I'm talking about experiences and impressions. Experience is four and more years, and impressions is three or less years of all these new apple scab resistant cultivars. The first one is Darling Bell, and uh, Darling Bell is also called Antares nowadays, which is the brand name, and it ripens late September to early October, similar to Boscov. And it has a medium fruit size around slightly flat and right light red to purple red skin color of about 30 to 60 percent on yellow base color with tendency of rusting. It has a good balanced taste and firm to crispy flesh. Barley Bell is up to six months of storage in a controlled cold store. It's a very vigorous tree and susceptible to powdery mildew, but we have a new cultivar uh, recently planted, supposed to have less susceptibility to powdery mildew. Okay, come to the next one. It is Gaia. It is from Schiff in Italy. It ripens early to mid-September, like Gala, and uh, only medium fruit size, approximately 70 millimeters. An attractive look with red skin color, and it has a sweet, not a wheat, sorry, a sweet taste. <laughs> and uh, it is a simple taste. Uh, it is, of course, resistant, and uh, we have not too much experience so far. Third one is uh, Galiva. It's also impressions. It's uh, ripe, it's like golden delicious. It has a medium fruit size, early and regular yields. That's, that's what it's supposed to have. We have not that experience so far. It has a medium red color and uh, yellow base color. It's a bit of flamey thing. Sorry, um, where am I? I have. Yeah, thanks. Um, there's two pickings necessary due to the color, and it's a firm flesh, juicy, very sweety, and it's a medium, compact growth, and this variety is susceptible to Nectaria galligena. I come to the cultivar Merkur. Merkur is from the Institute for Experimental Botany in Prague, in Czech Republic. It ripens two weeks earlier than Golden Delicious. It has a medium fruit size, flat stem to a round body. It is an attractive fruit, red, purple, red color from 60 to 80 percent on a green, yellow base color with little russeting in the stalk cavity. It is one to two pickings necessary due to the skin color 
is juicy with mild, sweetly balanced sugar acid proportion. Three to four months of storage in controlled cold store and uh, medium vigorous growth. So I'm coming to the variety which we have the most experience with, as it is Natura, six years. A late ripeness of fruit uh, while or after Braeburn. I mixed that when I was talking to two grow growers in the front door before the session with the other PRI number I have uh, later on. It has a good fruit quality, a partly little crack that calice, and a slow growth probably, a little vigorous growth, and uh, strong manual thinning is necessary with this cultivar. Um, we do have, of course, figures with all these varieties, but I want to show you only with this one. If you see here, this is a kilogram per tree, which makes you, if I uh, make a calculation for, for you in bushels per acre, that is around 500 bushels per acre, which you can yield with this variety. We have first experiences with Opal, it's also from the Institute for Experimental Botany in Prague. And Opal is uh, ripe and similar to Golden Delicious, has early and regular yields. It's an attractive fruit that's orange blush on yellow base color. Fruit size is medium or less. The firm flesh is juicy and sweet and has an average taste. So there are three more to come. This is the other. PRI number from PR Wageningen in the Netherlands. We have three years, I'm uh, sorry, you have the experience uh, with ripeness similar to Elster and Gala. The fruit shape is flat, stemmed to round bodied, a dark red skin color of 90%, a medium vigorous growth uh, and a vital tree, and uh, first positive taste testings, sweet to slightly sweet sour, juicy and aromatic. Next one is Renoir from Chiff, Italy. Renoir is uh, ripe in mid September in between Elsa and Boscop cultivars, has a medium fruit size, is not attractive fruit due to strong russeting, has an interesting taste like a Renet, and until now, very little own experience. But it's uh, scab resistant. Interesting. Okay. Come to series, my last cultivar. Ripeness similar to Golden Delicious, early and regular yields. It has medium large to large fruit size, a good taste, especially in rankings. Not so attractive fruit, with frequent russeting in the stalk cavity and on fruit skin. Flesh is firm, very juicy, balanced sugar acid proportion. With this last uh, slide, I want to show you one of the uh, apple variety testing, the expert testing on the taste and the appearance. Probably a few of you, a lot of you know Sweetie for already, or Myra from, from Switzerland, or Sapporo, or Rubens. And within this judgment from the expert meeting and, and a conference we have every year in Germany, we have experts who have to taste and judge the varieties. And as you may have guessed from our presentation, Natura, Natura here and in the second one, controls sort of in this one, has been established as a good taste. And uh, we hear, we heard this morning in the discussion uh, that the taste is the, 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 the most important thing with the new variety. Um, Yesterday, Howard Nager from Domex asked us, what's the next honey crisp? And my question to you is, what is the next organic honey crisp? Thanks for your attention. Do we have a question for Karsten? Do you have a personal favorite? Personal favor? I Those think... Varieties. Is there one that really stands out as far as... Uh, Eating quality and, and productivity. Um, 
these, these, these are all the new cultivars. Mm -hmm. And this, it's actually the, our, from our variety testing. We have established Topaz and Santana, which at the moment I prefer, also from the taste. But these are the new ones that my Carab and Natura has the best taste from all, all of them. Um, uh, yeah, Rubens, as you can see, Rubens, is Rubens f familiar in, in the States? Rubens is, no. is one of the best tastes I think uh, you can have, but it's not scap resistant at all. But this is, if you look at scap resistant varieties, Natura is the best nuke coming up. Maybe Franco, you might make a comment to that from your experience because you're also a variety testing expert. Yes, we have uh, four, four or five years. We have Natura also in the, the, the larger, larger panel mm -hmm. uh, taste testing, and it's all, always one of the favorites. Uh, it does not extremely well in the organic orchard trials, mm -hmm. but we will have uh, we will have 2,000 trees and uh, distributed on a, a larger scale. It's, it's absolutely worth looking at. It. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Yes. It's the most planted new cultivar in our organic farms in, the, in this and the next year. Mm -hmm. So there's a pl program that is uh, started to grow this, this variety. One more question here. Yeah, uh, do you know if any of these are available in the United States yet, or if any companies are bringing them in? Oh, I was asked this question already in the front or uh, before the session. Yeah. Um, on my experience, you you probably able to to ask the nurseries that they grow these varieties in Europe, for example, this one in, in the Netherlands, um, to to have a look. Or maybe the research stations could ask for that. Normally, you, you can import if the roots are washed and all these sort of things, but uh, just to, to make an experience with the new variety, I think it's worth trying it, of course. Great, thank you. Thank you.